Hello and welcome to a session of data sufficiency. What is data sufficiency? Now, let's have a look at the directions which are given for such questions to understand this type of question. Now, the directions are mark A if a statement 1 alone is sufficient, but statement 2 alone is not sufficient, which means that if a question is given and there are two statements which are given, what we need to find out is if the statements are sufficient to answer the question. Now, first option says if statement A alone is sufficient. So, statement 1 or statement 2 are both of them independent of each other. The second option is if statement 2 alone is sufficient and statement 1 alone is not sufficient. So, similarly, the first one is independent, second one is independent and they might just be satisfying the condition to find the answer. Now, in order to understand this entire thing better, let us take the first thing which is the way in which we proceed. So, let us have a flow chart which is there. After reading the data which is given in the statement and understanding the problem, now idea is to understand the problem, what is required. It is not about how much, it is about exactly pinpointing what is required. Right? After identifying that what, we need to start reading the statements. Now, if we read the statement 1, uh, available data is sufficient. Now, is the data sufficient? If it is sufficient, good, then we proceed to a second step. If it is not, then we proceed to a different second step. Now, if it is sufficient, then we check the second statement. Why? Because let us go back. What did it say? Statement 1 alone is sufficient, statement 2 alone is not sufficient. So, we will have to find out if statement 1 alone is sufficient, is statement 2 alone sufficient or not. If it is also sufficient, then we cannot mark 1 as the answer then we have to go back and mark 2 as the answer. If statement 1 alone is not sufficient, now what do we do? Statement 2 anyways we will have to check because if it is sufficient then we can mark option B which is statement 2 alone is sufficient but 1 is not. Now if suppose both of them are not sufficient, then we have to combine both of them, the data from both the questions together. Is it giving us the required answer or are we reaching an end point? If yes, then we can mark the third option. If not, we will have to go and mark another option. Let us take an example to see if we can answer a question. The question is, is a square an integer? A simple question, a square is an integer or not? Now, let us look at the first statement. a is a negative whole number. Now, whole numbers are in integers, negative or positive? Integers are both negative and positive. So, if a is a negative whole number, if I square it, it will also give me a whole number, but this time it will be positive. So, integer does not matter it is positive or negative, integer is both. So, from the first statement we can get the answer that yes, a square is an integer. Now, what do we do? We have to check the second option also. Why? Because statement 2 alone is not sufficient as the criteria in the first option. So, statement 2, 4 a square is an integer. On the outset, a lot of, one, lot of us will go back and mark this, yes, it is sufficient. But let us go back to the theory of numbers. 4 a square is an integer. So, can a be half? Half square is 1 by 4. So, 4 into 1 by 4 is 1. So, 1 is an integer. So, 4 a square is an integer will give me, yes, 4 a square or rather 2 a is an integer, but a may not be an integer. So, hence, second statement will not give me an answer. So, I will have to mark first option which is statement 1 is giving me the answer, but statement 2 is not. Let us have a look at another question. Are two triangles congruent? Now, let us go back into the triangles chapter and recollect what is congruency. Congruency is nothing but when two triangles are exactly same, not similar, exactly same, which means their shape and the size are exactly the same. So, let us look at the first option. They are both equilateral triangles. Now, all equilateral triangles will have the same angles, so they both are similar, but congruent, I do not know. I cannot say that they are congruent. They may be, but not with 100% confidence. Now, here the trick is you have to have surety of 100%. You cannot leave a chance. Let us look at the second statement. They are both have equal bases and equal heights. Now, in the second statement, a lot of us will go back and assume that the first statement is taken for granted, but that is not. So, let us keep the equilateral triangle thing out of our mind and look at it individually. The second statement says they both have equal bases and equal heights. Now, equal bases and equal heights 
I can make 10 different types of triangles, different angles, different ways in which can be present. It may be right angle triangle also, it may not be also. So, second statement alone is not giving me a clear answer. If I combine, now that I have exhausted statement 1 and statement 2, so my next logical step is what? Going to check them both together. Now, if I check them both together, equilateral triangles, yes. Second, equal basis, which gives me a very clear confidence that they both have equal basis and both of them are equilateral triangles. So, they have to be congruent. Going by the ASA rule, which means that both the angles and the included sides. So, if one side is same, other sides are bound to be same because they are all same angles. So, here we can con conclude very clearly that yes, by using both the statements together, we are able to get an answer. Let us look at the next question. What is the maximum possible age of any woman if the average age of three women is 26 years? Now, three women average age 26 years. Can I predict their age? No. But I know one thing that their total age will be 78. The total of the three women, it will be 78. Now, let us look at the first statement. Not one of them is greater than 34. Now, here there is no lower limit. So, if one is 34, the total is 78. So, other two can be together 44, which means that they can be 22, 22 also. I am just taking an option. But yes, the maximum is 34 possible because they are saying that not one of them is greater than 34. So, that is one thing. Let us look at the second statement. From the first statement, we are getting an answer. Huh? So, let us look at the second statement. Not one of them is less than 22. So, they are not less than 22, but they might be 22. So, if I put both of them in 22, I will get the maximum age possible for the third person. So, going by it, 22 plus 22 will give me 44. Total is 78. So, the maximum possible age for the third one is what? 34. So, here also I am getting a clear answer that 34 will be maximum age. So, let us not complicate. Statement 1 is giving me an answer. Statement 2 is giving me an answer. Here, it is a pure coincidence that both of them are giving me the same answer. So, yes, we can conclude that statement 1 alone is able to give me an answer and statement 2 alone also is able to give me an answer. So, we will mark that option. Let us look at the next question. In the figure given, AB is parallel to CD. Now, question is, is EF shorter than shorter in length than km. Let us understand, two lines are parallel and there are two lines transversing both of them. Now, which will be shorter? Let us understand this. Let us go back to what we learnt in lines and angles. Now, between two parallel lines, which will be the shortest line that uh, passes through both of them? Now, that line will be nothing but the closest to 90 degree. The shortest will, one will be 90 degree, which is perpendicular. Now, if a line is not 90 degree, what will be shorter? The one closer to 90 degree will be shorter. The one far away from 90 degree may be on 100 side or on the 50 side. Now, whichever is more difference from 90 degree will be slanting in height. Hence, it will be longer. So, what we have to find out is which one is much more closer to 90 degrees compared to the other. So, let us look at the first statement. Angle BKM is equal to 130 and angle EFM is equal to 120. Now, BKM is 130, which means that it is 40 away from 90 degrees, which is given by the line KM and the second line, which is EF. Now, EFM is 120 degrees, which gives me that yes, it is 30 degrees away from 90 degrees. So, line EF is much more straighter or rather shorter compared to KM. Now, this is where we know, yes, statement 1 is giving me an answer. Let us look at the second statement. Angle KMF is equal to 130 degrees and angle EKM is equal to 50 degrees. Now, KMF that is nothing but something which is on the KM line and EKM again is on the KM line. So, both the things are giving me data about the same line. They are not giving me data about the other line. So, I cannot conclude with the second one anything about the first line which is EF. Hence, second statement alone is not able to satisfy. These were the ways in which we solved data sufficiency questions. We will have to remember a couple of things. First, the basics, because if a data sufficiency question is of quant, we need to go back to the topic, recollect the basics and then start applying. It is not difficult. 
but it is tricky. So, we need to be careful about it.